Greetings. My name is Guy Dornsey and this is a show called Change the World, where I like to in invite people on who share my passion for a much more beautiful, wonderful, cooperative, loving, creative, etc. future. My guest today is Russell Coy, who grew up with a deep love of salmon, the Pacific Ocean, and the mighty cedar forests. Mm. You're a member of the Shemakwam First Nation near Mount Curry, with strong family ties to the Suetlam Heitlam First Nation southwest of Williams Lake. And Russell works to strengthen opportunities for indigenous people and communities and has represented First Nations people and cultures at many events, including the Cannes Film Festival, fancy, fancy, and the launch of the Aboriginal People's Television Network. She is the Victoria candidate to be Member of Parliament for the Federal Green Party of Canada. So, um, big journey. Tell me more about your past. Let people get to know you. If you're going to be our future MP, you're, you're running to get that place. Absolutely. How does it all start? Well, um, absolutely, I'm very deeply committed and involved to our First Nations, but definitely my entire career, it's all a bit about social justice activities, whether it's economic development or training. I've worked in the downtown east side. So go back younger, younger, younger. When, younger, you're, younger, when, you're, when you're 10, 12, you're not talking economic development. What got you started with the social justice concern? Uh, I have an amazing First Nations mother. So uh, my ancestry is Shwetmach and Statliam. And thank yes. you so much for saying <laughs> both the communities so well. Uh, my mother is First Nations. My father is Dutch. Right. Um, both families were very involved in social justice. My mother's grandfather was very involved with helping the Chinese railway workers oh, right. getting their rights. My um, my father's um, Dutch yeah. mother, she was very involved in the peace movement in the Netherlands. Oh, um, right. Absolutely. So there's uh, just a strong drive for uh, creating community. I grew up in a house where we were all about giving back, engaging, right. getting to know others. So it's not about other, it's about us, um, right. irregardless of where a person is from because how I was taught yeah. is um, any opportunity to engage with people was an opportunity for an exchange and what we refer to as a true enrichment. Right, now some people say to me, oh, the world population is so big, people shouldn't have children. And I say, yes, but if you have two activists, they should have 10 children because the children of <laughs> activists become really super activists. <laughs> well, um, my parents uh, had three um, and I grew up in a house of boys. I grew yeah. up um, with a great love as a very active person. So you've got two brothers. Yeah, I actually have three. But three. So you've got to take on that energy then, <laughs> uh, otherwise you're yeah. beaten down. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all built somewhat in the same size. Uh, my dad has bossy jeans. Um, right. but that meant that I had the wherewithal to go out and enjoy. Uh, for the longest time, I was by bicycle only. I refused to have a driver's license because I really wanted to drink in wherever mm, I was. Uh, yeah. Avid hiking, um, just yeah. the opportunity to really connect with the land. I remember one of my first memories of a little girl yeah. was in uh, the North Shore of right. the Lynn Valley area in before all the development that there is there today yes, yes. was chasing the tadpoles and that smell of the moss yes. um, sitting on the old growth stumps unfortunately they were stumps but yes. old growth stumps yes. and how they the way they just de gently gently decay mm -hmm. in our temperate mm -hmm. rainforests and and that feeling of it under under my fingers, yes. what that felt like. And you could see those nursing trees, those yes. nurse logs that were giving life to the next generation. And those are some of my well, earliest memories. Well, now we're learning so much more about in the forest. It's not just the nurse log, but the root system Absolutely. is connecting with the fungi and the mushrooms. And they're all actually, they're a community of trees working together in a Absolutely. way that we never understood before. And then we're understanding when the salmon come in, the bears bring the salmon in yeah. and they rot and they're feeding the trees as well. It's all just amazing. Well, um, actually, uh, if you go into our traditional ecological knowledge from yes. either my Statlium side or my Shwetma side, yes. if I look at the stories or we refer to them as stuk death or oral tellings, yeah. uh, we have a lot of our laws and we also have a lot of our moral um, encompassed in our stories. Yes. And there's one about coyote who marries a tree. Right. Why does coyote marry a birch tree? To make trees our relations because they're part of our ecosystem. So it sounds like a very simple story, a little quirky about yeah. um, a coyote or um, Skelep as we call yeah. him. But you know, Skelep to have that relation with the tree, and you know, let's not be out of turn with that, but we understand that there, we understand that that tree is giving back to us well, in I ways can that we can't that. even imagine. If you, when you're living in a clan or tribe and you've got another clan that's invading you and is hostile, enslaving maybe, they're definitely not in the family. So when you, you use marriage to bring them into the family, 
So to marry the tree into the family is, is beautiful. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, I think there's some misnomers about hostility. I think there was... Well, the West Coast, we know there was... There's different interpretations of story, <laughs> absolutely, and okay. I uphold them. And and a certain the Heide were well respected for their warrior skills. <laughs> I, everybody's got their thing that they like to put out there. You know, when you have a big bad reputation, it helps maintain the peace too, okay. right? Okay, <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. And yes. for myself, that's not the way that I right. I, I am. I I yes. believe. Um, in fact, with the work that I do a lot, of, I do a lot of mediation, chairing of meetings to really ensure that there's great engagement, right. engagement and dialogue, that yes. that collective wisdom can yes. rise up. Um, because me, yeah. you, we have great perspective, we yeah. have great expertise, but when you have that collective wisdom rising up, you can grow into something much yeah. bigger. So in due course, we'll get on to the Green Party and the, you know, running as a big member of parliament, but I want to stay with the, in your Aboriginal world, I've been living in, on the Vancouver Island 30 years, and for 25 of those years, I saw no dialogue, no engagement with First Nations, and sort of two separate realms. And I've seen phenomenal change in the last five years. Do, is that something you're picking up on? How do you sense the state of play between the two communities? Uh, I'll say it's not even something that I'm picking up on. It's something that myself and many, many, many people, uh, whether it's allies such as yourself yes. or other people, we have constantly, since forever, since the first peoples coming into the territory yes. as settlers, looking for ways to right. be respectful. I just think finally you're hearing it. And there's good work, uh, like whether it's a Truth and Reconciliation yes. Commission yes. and their good work that they did, but there's a time for the dialogue. You know, when I went to school, I'm in my 40s, I went to school, there was about a page and a half in our social studies books about yeah. Indigenous people. So it takes 10 minutes to study it and then you move yeah, on. Yeah, and then the rest of it, although I knew I wasn't obliterated, I know my family, I know my traditions, but I also understand um, that there's a bigger world that we're operating in. So right. I think that that's another part. So that you probably taught more about the kings of England than you were about. <laughs> <laughs> I may have even said hello to one or two of them in my past work. Um, that, in fact, that's where I got to hone some of my public speaking skills is having to address crowds of people in Spain in English, in French, okay, and in Spanish. Okay, there's, there's a story here, <laughs> and you're going to tell it. <laughs> uh, Language skills, Spain, big crowd. Take it away. Well, you know, um, to brave up, to stand, uh, to be considered for a member of parliament, to... Um, a very committed uh, community of people. I mean, Victorians are informed, Victorians are engaged, they're community builders, they read, they're highly educated, they're motivated. For, to have them yes. consider me, I have to have a certain level of confidence and ability yes. to offer back to them. Yes. And so that's been a long journey, a great journey, but that started off um, where I got to go to Spain and represent Canada as one of the uh, hosting staff for the uh, Canada Pavilion, where we'd have 500... Canada Pavilion at? Uh, Expo 92. Okay. And at Expo 92, um, we would welcome in 500 people at a time into IMAX theater, and we'd have to address them in English, en français, y espagnol. You, you'd have been 20 years old or something. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do the math on that one. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> so very young, um, but mm. being brought up with parents who had me be very open to the wide world, having uh, a Dutch father where I was sent off and away to the Netherlands to meet my Dutch relatives, yes. being very engaged with my First Nations family, I ha was comfortable knowing who I was. Well, so The Dutch notoriously speak five or ten languages, because <laughs> who's going to learn Dutch? So they're going to learn the other languages, right? Yes, yes. How many languages do you speak altogether? Uh, fluently, I am bilingual, uh, en français, uh, in English. Yes. Uh, Hablo a veces cuando español. I am, <laughs> and um, I do speak um, smatterings of both of my indigenous languages, wow. which are Shwetmastin and Uchamich. Learning, it's much easier to learn French in Canada than uh, our indigenous language. So, if this is a trick question or test question, if you become MP and you make your opening speech in Parliament, what language would you choose, uh, even for the first five or ten words? Uh, most likely, I would start off by saying, Wake Waita Rissel Koyen's quest. Which means? Hello, my name is, Hello, oh, my okay. name is Rissel Koyen. And that would yes. be my Shwetmastin language. And right. that's quite often how I do start introducing myself yes. anywhere. Um, so yeah. when you're in Spain and suddenly thrown out there and speaking to these big crowds, what, did it, what happened inside yourself? Did it, was, well, it, was it terrifying or glorious? Um, I think what I love um, 
about that experience is I got to understand about whether it was prime ministers or presidents or kings or queens or any other official representation yes. that they're human beings with a job, right. uh, with a responsibility and with an obligation for service. Yes. And so I got to witness that firsthand and how, how they take that seriously, how they engage with public, um, how they represent. It is interesting how Queen Elizabeth II in particular made a, almost when she was 18 years old, a vow that she would serve her life in service. Previous kings, you know, out there, conquer, conquer, whatever male thing they wanted to do, but it was very clear her commitment to service. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the loyalty people have to her, I think because of that, they know that she's there to build community and help other people. Um, in uh, thinking about Shamaquam and my Statlian yes. relations, uh, thinking about her hereditary chief system that's very alive and well there, um, I think about those who serve, we serve, or those who are leaders, we're there. It's that much more of an indication to serve the people. So yes. to me, to step forward uh, is not to lead, it's to serve, right. it's to so amplify. As a potential member of parliament, you're bringing three words forward, commitment, community, and conscience, yes. right? What does commitment mean for you? Um, well, that's why I chose to run with the Green Party, is we can stand, um, stand tall, stand strong in our truth, stand for absolutely for what are yes. the, uh, the needs, the rights of our constituent base. Yes. We don't have to tow a particular party, party line. Yes. yes, there is a Vision Green document, which is very important. Yes. I adhere to that. But at the same time, I can stand there in that good way, that commitment right. that no matter what, we will stand committed to our constituents and the values that we put forward. So what's your take on the climate crisis, which is emerging as one of the biggest things we all have to be concerned about? You mean the climate breakdown? The climate breakdown, the climate emergency, the climate well, crisis. To be a matter of fact, I, I'm, I'm here in Victoria because I was displaced due to climate. I was looking for a place to come to be in 2017 yeah. because if you want to know where I lived exactly, all you have to do is look at old clips from the 2017 wildfires yeah. because we were pushed out. I was a wildfire yes. evacuee right. for 40 days and I got the, the gift of yeah. uh, my asthma returning after 40 years of being asthma free. Yeah. Uh, I also, in the backyard of where I was living in Hatsul First Nation, yes. I was also the Mount Polly mine spill. So, so what do you think Canada has to do to tackle the climate breakdown, the climate crisis? Uh, it's all hands on deck. It's right here, right now. I think as individuals, there is only so much we can do. There is a much greater impact yeah. on the larger picture of things. And um, for me, that is, not about investing, uh, you hear it all the time, about keep it in the ground. Yes, there is always a yeah. need and their place for um, the oil industry and, the, and what comes out of the ground, yes. but do you need to, new infrastructure? No. Do you need to burn it up for our cars? No. Is there other places and for yes. spaces for bitumen? Is there ways that we can keep and do the refining here in Canada? Is there uh, other opportunities? I really get excited about what I see yeah. here, whether it's on the island or elsewhere, about whether it's run of the river or it's solar panels or any of those things. How, how rapidly do you think we need to get to 100% renewable energy, zero carbon? <laughs> I'm, I'm putting, I'm, you're, you're grilling you now as a future potential member of parliament. <laughs> this stuff matters to me, right? And to our your viewers. It, well, I, if it didn't matter to me, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Right. Yes. It's very clear that this is a right here, right now. Yeah. Um, there's a right here, right now um, need for uh, action. And like I said, yeah. we're, we can do our parts to a degree, yeah. but there are other aspects where um, on the everyday realities, um, whether or not yes. uh, you can change your car to electric only yeah. or a hybrid, you know, there's some parts in the technology and the investments to that to, um, yeah. that need to happen. But those aren't going to happen uh, on our own. It's that collect. We, we're putting forward yeah. a collective will. We have kids skipping out of school to say it's right here, right now. So no Norway is saying that by 2025, every new vehicle will be electric. And, and British Columbia is saying by 2040. I think at 2040, that's, that's shoveling it off to someone else to look after it, right? To yeah. me, 2040 is a, is a nothing it's of a It's too date. far away. It's, it's way too, too far, far away for the urgency of it all. What about um, inequality? The, the, the concern of people who are running up debt, the inequality, the struggles people are having financially in our society. As an, as an MP, how do you 
Potential MP, I should say. <laughs> well, I like to think, I mean, I, I, I believe you. You have to embrace it to feel it. And you visualize I, you being absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yes. And I would say ab uh, as much as uh, indigenous issues are something that I, I adhere yes. to strongly, uh, as much as climate is uh, key, because if you don't have clean air and clean water, yes. how can you function? But once you look after the clean air and clean water and you're on that good path, then the every day of people, uh, you have uh, an economic inequity, you yes. have uh, homelessness, you have um, the struggles of the, the trickle down. What yeah. is the trickle down economy? I don't see it. We're talking it's about it. trickling. There's no trickling. I heard someone define it. It's like being pissed on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I also think that um, we hear about jobs, 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 and yes. I would like to say um, I think people want jobs, you yes. can create a job quickly with a subsidy, yeah. but that's a job with a job insecurity. We're currently in a realm of a gig economy. Yes. And I would say you want to talk about um, people feeling fulfilled, it's being a, for them to find their passion in the new economy. Yeah. Uh, it's to find their passion to get yeah. the training and have the opportunity to engage. Yes. So they're not thinking about a job, but they're thinking about a career in something that is fulfilling to them. You know, I think about my relatives. I have relatives who work in mining. I have relatives who work in forestry. Yeah. Uh, why? Because that's what is available to them. Yes. Is that what they'd really love to do? Probably not. Do you think they want to be underground in a mine? Probably yeah, not. Why would anyone? Yeah. But at the same time, you need to find other ways to engage them. And that's one of the things that has been um, yeah. part of what I've done in the past is looking at how do you engage it, how do you take a natural resource, um, particularly in tourism is where I was involved yes. to get that appreciation yes. and having people to come and experience that and create an awareness and a love for the land. Yeah. Um, it's a great book. But there's so many other ways and choices that you can make as well as um, having that whole vertical yes. alignment of any one resource. We're still, this may be 2019, yes. but we're still in a gold rush mentality yeah. of our natural resources. And you know, it's something I grew up hearing about yeah. again and again and again. So, so federally, let's let's assume that we got an election coming up this this October. Is that right? Yes, we do. October. And Green Party now has just one MP, Elizabeth May. Let's let's be bold and, and imagine we have ten coming mm -hmm. up, and that there's the potential always to hold a balance of power yes. and to be in partnership with either yeah. Liberals or NDP. I, it's not going to. There's no partnership happening with the Conservatives. I know that. And if there was some you had that chance to have leverage like we really yeah. this is one conditional thing for our partnership what kind of thing would that be in terms of the the policy portfolio of ideas the changes you really want to see happen or to Good. go back and consult with elizabeth may about i should have <laughs> no, warned no. you about this question no, that's right? that's uh, certainly i i love what elizabeth has to yes. say um, she needs the help she, she needs, needs the, the help, help. Uh, i but i also think um what is essential, what you hear right now, we, like I said, I chose the word climate breakdown yes. with intent. Yes. And for me, what we, we see in British Columbia right now is that we do see the balance of power, power, but we also, we may not form government, but we can inform government yes. of what the priorities are and have that long term conscience yes. to make changes that are um, ensuring a bright future yeah. down the way and absolutely um, making choices about climate breakdown yeah. should not mean that people are going hungry or that they should yes. still be homeless or that they yeah. should be displaced. It's, it's about making sure that all those other things are being looked after because climate will always be at the center, but it touches yes. everything around it. And you also need to ensure we can focus over at economy yes. and within an economy, you're going to still have interplay of how do you we're talking about wanting people yeah. to get involved in careers yeah. uh, rather than gig economy jobs yes. that are good for a day and then they have to move tomorrow. And you're struggling, never knowing struggling, not yes. knowing if you have to go from, you know, look at but, how many uh, Newfoundlanders but, but the are. Rent in is, but the rent is permanent. You can't just, oh, can't yeah. pay the rent this month. I'm in the gig yeah. economy. Yeah, you know, how many, what's the percentage of renters here in Victoria, for example, right? 60, so, 70 percent. You I know, think. so th th you know, th there's things around people who want to have not only just security yes. uh, around their economy, yeah. but the savings to be able to have uh, the savings look after themselves yes. when they get to seniors and health care. Yeah. 
you want to feel good about yes. moving forward, but you also don't want to feel like you're doing it at the expense of another. Yeah. And I think to me, that's why I have the word community right. on my card is about yes. the community of what I'm doing over here, guys, should not be affecting what you're doing. If I do, yeah. that going back to coyote and the tree in relationship yes. is what I'm doing on the ground as coyote running around yeah. and with an, an interaction with that tree, there should be some mutual respect going on. And, and conscience, your third important word, where Absolutely. does that fit in? Well, conscious is what you just talked about as what we would bring to um, Ottawa as MP, right. is, is that conscience. And I'm claiming that word back from the NDP. They did have it before. I don't think, I think they will run green in elections, but they definitely don't govern green. Well, they're supporting the, the LNG project. Let's say fracking. Yes. Let's not say LNG, fracking, let's say natural fracking. Natural gas are the same thing. Flaming all, yes. faucets is fracking. Yes. Uh, Yes. Human-made earthquakes is fracking, yes, yeah. uh, poisoning of, of water. But natural gas via fracking is as bad as a climate impact as coal. So That's it's really, right. we cannot be expanding that no, stuff. No, right. absolutely yeah. not. And I know that with the, 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 the school students going on strike for climate, they are reading about the climate crisis and they think, holy shit is what they're <laughs> feeling. I'm going to say it on television because that's what they're feeling. They're really concerned. Yeah. And when the teachers say, oh, you should, or the parents say, you shouldn't play truant, or not, you know, they're saying, you've been playing truant with the climate for the last 30 years. It's time for a rapid action on this one. You know, I've been standing with those kids uh, since this all this year with them. Yes. I think I've been going since uh, I first heard about them in early February, yes. when there was just a small handful, yes. um, all the way to March 15th, where we had thousands of people on the Legislative Assembly lawn. 21 million across, I mean, huge numbers across the world. Across I forget the, the world, number, but, but very I mean, big. We had a great amount. And you know, sure, they're not learning in the classroom, but yeah. what I do see is young people finding their voice, informing themselves, really taking important. interest. Um, Developing critical thinking, because I know um, the quote unquote trolls yes. on a Twitter will say, oh, they're, they're brainwashed. I'm like, oh my goodness, if you took yeah. five minutes to come down and listen to those kids or look at any of the yes. videos that I'm posting on my Twitter feed yes. or on my Facebook, uh, I'm not saying anything. I'm just amplifying yes. their message. They are taking the time to inform themselves, yeah. to find real ways to move forward. Yeah. For example, I mean, I've been involved in the environmental movement for some, you know, 25, 30 years now. And just this year, there's a the critical awareness around the climate crisis and the simultaneous ecological crisis, the die off of the insects. People are really saying, oh, my goodness, you know, if we don't have the 80 percent loss of insects in, in some places, insects pollinate food. We can't. And, and they people pollinate are, food, they aerate soil, they... And people are raising There's got to be some sort of radical transition and change to... I use the phrase a new ecological civilization for the goal of where we're heading, because we can't just be complaining all the time. Yeah. Is that something you'd buy into, a whole new ecological civilization? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, again, I don't know what that exactly that looks like. Yeah. Um, I think there's lots of great ideas floating there, as well as spaces and places where people are implementing and testing the waters. Yeah. I think there's great movement happening, but it's tiny little pockets. Tiny little pockets aren't yeah. going to make a change. There are people such as yourself, mm -hmm. such as myself, in our own different ways. Me, it's been more about social justice. Right. You, you say you've been in the environmental yeah. movement for yes. as long as you have. I have too, in a yeah. different right. way, because yeah. in our, our teaching. They have to come together. Absolutely. And yes. I think a word that's not on my card, but a word that I think is of, yes. of the moment right now, it's not that the work hasn't been happening. It's not that there has not been people championing it. It's because of what's happening. It's heightening and it's coming to, yes. um, to a peak of, of, of dire consequences as well as opportunity for change. We're in what, a moment of what I call convergence. Yeah. Because in that convergence, we're, we're pulling from the best. We're pulling from that hive mind. Yes. We're pulling from the collective good of all of us for a greater tomorrow. So I feel it's similar. When, when Trump first got elected, the first response was, oh my God, oh my God. Then you saw what his success did for women in particular in America. He said, I'm not going to stand for this. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to run for power. And the great upsurge for the Women's March and then onwards. And the same thing I think is happening with, with climate and ecology. Like, oh my goodness, we can't sit back and watch television. We need to get engaged and do this and protect the old growth forest, protect the climate, protect species, protect rivers, protect jobs, build a new way of living. Because it's time to move. And is that a hat that, that if, if you can be representative for that and, and carry that whole movement, you're going to have a lot of people saying, yes, this is, Russell represents me. 
Well, absolutely. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that yes. we had to have that opportunity for real change. This is not about incremental change. Yes. Incremental change. There is little bits of incremental change that you'll find with the little yes. Liberal Party. There's little bits of incremental change that you'll find with the NDP Party. Um, there's even tiny little bits if you dig deep in the Conservative well, Party. Well, I know the NDP will say they have the similar depth of passion and concern that, uh, in just the same thing, probably. And uh, a lot of viewers who are NDP. I voted NDP sometimes, Green sometimes. Then I get beaten up by both sides for doing that. Um, <laughs> you know, but you have to remember right now, we're, 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 not, we're talking about the federal election, but we have yes. to remember that there is a direct connect between provincial NDP and federal NDP as far as how they run. And what you find is it is about... Um, big opportunities that are also old opportunities yes. like we talk about site c dam we talked about fracking or the lng yes. line we talk about decisions that are made in the quick turnaround of promising of jobs rather than long-term careers yes. and economic sustainability yeah. or even more important than talking about careers it's about employment equity and economic equity yeah. however that needs to look like when you're talking about this other way of thinking there's a, there needs to be understanding of what that looks like and valuing people who may now be seen as on the fringes right. of doing the good work that they're doing is it a big learning curve getting up to speed on so many different files um it's more about uh learning it's less about the it's less about the gathering up to speed on, on many of the files as yes. much as it's a terminology because right. how I view it and the perspectives I've come to those files is different and there's an evolution in any level of politics yeah. or any level of engagement or even scholarly knowledge yes. that will be the foundation of the research that goes into it yeah. there is an evolution to that yeah and so um when does campaigning start? When do you actually start door knocking and being on the streets and stuff like that? Oh, well, it's already started. There's oh. already been engagement that's been going on. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to make sure people have a chance yes. to get to know me, understand who I am and what yeah. I stand for. But more importantly, particularly with what you're talking about and the questions you're asking me, I appreciate them all, yeah. is that's also what is very important for me. I may, I may see what the trends are. I may see what the opportunities are. I may also see what the uh, quote unquote threats are, yes. but I also need to go and talk to our constituent base. So you're listening. So, so absolutely, a listening campaign is in, is yeah. on the go right now. Also, getting right. to know me, as well as hearing uh, where yeah. pe what people are thinking and what has them concerned. I've had people approach me already around homelessness, yes. poverty, opioid crisis. Yes. I personally am very affected by the yes. opioid crisis. It's uh, unfortunately in any minority groups, particularly yeah. when there's a high level of poverty, you yeah. know opioid crisis comes in because generally that goes along with trauma. It yes. goes along with um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, managing Abuse, mental health, all yeah, yeah, all those things. Well, look, this has been fantastic. Um, congratulations for standing up as a leader. And, you know, I mean, it takes a lot of courage to say, I'm going to do this and make it happen. And, you know, you're young enough to have another 40 years in pedigree in <laughs> politics, hey, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I've only, got, I've only got 30 years left till I'm 100, but you've got, you know, you've got 70 years left. So. <laughs> I love the attitude. Yeah. Thank you so much. So um, my guest today has been Russell Coy. My name's Guy Dornsey. This is the show Change the World. One of my small contributions is this novel I've written, which is really a, it's a massive work of nonfiction masquerading as a novel called Journey to the Future, A Better World is Possible, set in Vancouver in the year 2032 and all these ideas we're talking about are becoming real and happening to give people a sense of the power of that vision. So thanks for watching and tune in next week.